Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am presenting to you from Central Europe in Hungary near the Danube in its capital, beautiful Budapest. Welcome, everybody, to today's class. We are focusing on speaking, speaking section, part one. Materials come from our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. And G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for the general version of the exam. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Roshni. Good to see students joining in on time. And you can download our app from your Google Play or Apple app stores. Just search for academic IELTS help. Look for our shield. Our websites look like this. This is our academic. We are an official IELTS registration center partnering with British Council. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. Get access to over 100 hours of video lessons, fully interactive course, as well as six fully interactive exams. For general IELTS, same idea just with a green background, different website, of course. Click on that big red button there. Nima Tula from Malaysia, hello to you as well. Hi, Reba. Hi, Roshni. You missed our members chat class, but that's okay. We will have more classes tomorrow. We have some extra classes tomorrow. So members, students, make sure to keep that in mind. You can send me an email if you have questions. Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Uh, Rihanna, Prabhin, I hope that your exam went really well and that you get a good score in the speaking. Amar, again, happy to have you on board as a member. Students, today we have this speaking part one. Tomorrow, members, we will have a task one diagram, I believe, pie charts. And then we will also have a speaking part three at the same time tomorrow that everybody can join and chat. Let's get into the IELTS speaking section, which is about 12 to 15 minutes. Students, one of the biggest mistakes is uh, thinking that the speaking is just a friendly chit chat with a native speaker. It is not. You have 12 to 15 minutes uh, to prove that you have an expert level of English. That's if you want a band nine, of course. Mehmet, I in Turkey, not far away from where I'm at. Um, so students, you do have to show a range of English in the 12 to 15 minutes. You have to show a range of grammar. Okay, if you know present perfect and you can use it in your speaking, then make sure to use it. If you can use conditionals, make sure to use those. If you can use subordinating, correlative, and coordinating conjunctions to join ideas, make sure to use those. If you can use qualitative language like fast car as well as quantitative language like 280 kilometers per hour, Make sure to use both, okay? Those are important elements to get those higher band scores, all right? Okay, thank you, Black Life. You're making me blush with that compliment, but I do appreciate it. All right, students, so let's get into it. Um, speaking part one, you go into your speaking interview. You will be greeted by an examiner. Make sure to arrive to the exam center early. We suggest at least 45 minutes to an hour early. Give yourself time to review notes. Take some questions like this uh, with you to your speaking uh, so that you can practice with other students who are there. Uh, if a student says, sorry, I don't want to practice, I'm shy, ask someone else. It's good for you, okay? Be confident. It's a very important part of success is being confident in your speaking. Okay, students, so let's warm up. 
these speaking uh, muscles of English uh, and uh, just make sure not to only write but also speak. So chat all you want but also speak as much as possible throughout this class. So don't be shy, repeat out loud, repeat questions that I say, repeat answers as well, okay? Uh, here we go. So the examiner, when you walk into the room, uh, they will say, please take your seat, say thank you. And then the first question that will come at you is, may I see your identification, please? So may I see your identification, please? Have a nice answer uh, for this, okay? Be ready, sound natural, and uh, practice different ways to answer these questions that you will have certainly asked of you. So Roshni says, yes, certainly here it is. Please have a look. Roshni, that's good. Marwadi says, yeah, here you go. Uh, please have a look and turn it back. Turn it back, Marwadi is awkward. Uh, return it is better, but you don't need to say that. They will give it back. Um, if they don't, Amarwadi, it does happen sometimes. If they forget to give it back to you, you can say, may I please have it back? Um, okay, so Amarwadi says, yes, sure. Please take a look. Now, if they forget, then you can say, may I please have it back? And they might say, well, I'll give it back to you when we're done. They usually give it back to you in the beginning, so you don't forget it there. But sometimes they'll hold on to it and then give it back later. Okay. Um, ENG Mahmoud says, please take a look. Onisim says, of course. Game Over says, sure, here it is. Uh, those are all nice ways to respond to that question. Make sure you sound natural. Okay. Now, while they have your passport, they will ask, what is your full name? They want to match your face with your name, with your ID, okay? Making sure that you're not a doppelganger or a look-alike. So what is your full name? Again, they will definitely ask you this question. Practice a few different ways to say this naturally. Build your confidence, okay? Onisim Lonut says, my surname is Onisim and my family name, or sorry, my name is, sorry, I'll go one more time, Onisim, filling in the blanks. So Onisim says, my surname is Lanute, and my name is Onisim. You can call me Onisim. I'm guessing that's what it is. Uh, Kartik says, my name is Kartik Wadwa, and you can call me Kartik. Not as Kartik, just Kartik, okay? We don't need the as. It's a little bit unnatural. Amar says, Oh, uh, my given name is Amar and my last name is Wadi. Please call me Amar. That works. Niamatula says, my full name is Niamatula Shahrani. Please call me Shahrani. Okay, good. Shahrani. All right. So Shahrani is your uh, first name then, I'm guessing. A full time, I thought it was Niamatula, but I guess not. All right, uh, Dev says my full name is Rodeva Braga, but you can call me Diva or Deva. Okay, hope I'm pronouncing that right, Dev. Yeah, that works. Eugen, hi. Thanks for the emoji salute. Uh, Shokiba says I'm Shokiba uh, Begmatova. Please call me Shokiba. You should say Shokiba, even if you keep it short, what the examiner should call you because they usually ask, what should I call you? Okay, so again, my name is Franklin McClure. Uh, please just call me Frank. All right, I'm just coming up with that. My name's actually Adrian, but uh, often names have nicknames like Franklin's called Frank. Uh, my name is Franklin McClure. Please just call me Frank. All right. Productive Human says, my name is James Bond. You can call me James or 007 as my uh, secret identity. All right. Productive. Good humor. So then they will ask you maybe one or two more questions uh, to break the ice to make you feel comfortable. 
Keep in mind, these questions are to make you feel comfortable. Don't overspeak, okay? Uh, don't speak really short. Your goal is to prove your English, but don't overspeak either. What do you do for fun? All right, for part one, I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, what do you do for fun? Okay, now that can be your hobby, that can be a sport that you play. Satisfying Time says, although I don't have much time to have fun, uh, when I have the chance, I hang out with friends and uh, make up some fun activities like playing chess. Satisfying Times, two important corrections. Don't mix but with although and uh, use the verb playing chess. Like chess is okay, but I would say like playing chess because you said activities before. Begum, good time to join in. Good luck on your speaking exam tomorrow. 10 True Tent, it says, I frequently read books and also swim during my leisure time. Now, 10 True, make sure that you use the question. So it doesn't say leisure time, it says for fun. Uh, so make sure to include a closer synonym in your answer so it's clear that you're answering the actual question. Uh, Amir says, I play cricket for fun. Amir, that's good. Again, prove your English. I play cricket for fun is too short. It doesn't let me give you a good score. Okay. I won't give you a bad score because it's good English, but I can't give you a great score because I don't know how good your English is. If you just say I play cricket for fun. So a better answer would be, and this is for Amir. Thank you for that answer. So I can show this example. Um, I play cricket for enjoyment. In fact, I had a great game with my friends last Saturday when I scored several points. Okay, so give me an example. If you're going to keep it short, it's fine, but just throw a smooth example in there, uh, which lets me give you a better score. Notice the difference. I play cricket for enjoyment. Sure, okay, so I took the word fun and I changed it for enjoyment. So right away, I'm increasing my band score for lexical resource, okay, meaning that my vocabulary is showing. I'm not just simply using the same word in the question, but I'm paraphrasing. And then I take one more step and I say something natural, uh, like a quick example, not for example, but more natural. In fact, I had a great game. Right away I'm showing my past uh, tense here. I'm using some past tense. I had a great game with my friends last Saturday when I scored several points. When I scored several points, makes this a complex sentence because I'm using the subordinating conjunction of time. So that will give me a much better score than if I just simply say, I play cricket for fun. Okay. Does that make sense, students? So does it make sense how you can have a correct answer that's short, like I play cricket for enjoyment, but that correct answer doesn't let me give you a score above band seven. Seven will be the max that I can give you even if all of your answers are correct and they're short like that because you're not showing me that higher level of English. Does that make sense? Okay. John says, well, I usually watch some uh, nice movies to relax. For example, yesterday I watched an interesting movie called when they see us. That's good, Joanne. So that would be a good example. All right. Roshni Amar, thank you for the feedback. Yeah, so students, when I'm asking you these questions, I do want you to say yes or no, just making sure you're still there. Okay. All right, students. So then the examiner will say, uh, now I will ask you some questions on a general topic. Uh, let's talk about the internet. Okay, so some topic that should be fairly easy to talk about and um, part one focuses on you okay so you see you there okay 
uh, U in the next question. Uh, you in the next question. So this is a personal kind of conversation dealing with you, not other people, not me, the examiner. Too many times students say, when you use the internet, when you do this, whoa, 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 not me, you. Um, so make sure you use I, me, myself. Okay, talk about yourself. All right. So when you use the internet, okay, keep that in mind. All right. How often do you use the internet? It's your first question. How often do you use the internet? Thank you for the acknowledgement, Shafrani. So how often do you use the internet? Questions like this, they always target a certain type of grammar. This one is often, so that's dealing with adverbs of frequency. All right. Satisfying time says, hmm, internet is honestly part of my life now. I use it almost all the time. It can be directly by surfing websites or indirectly by uploading my photos to the cloud or managing um, uh, or messaging someone on WhatsApp. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, that's a great answer, satisfying times. Some nice examples in there. Uh, maybe give it some quantity, satisfying times, like at least a dozen times a day, all right? Ayatullah Tunk. Well, nowadays I allocate a great deal of my time to using the internet. Uh, takes up about five hours of my day. And Ayatullah, just like satisfying times, throw a couple examples in there, whether it's uploading photos, playing video games, or simply watching Netflix. I'm online frequently, okay? Uh, Jung Joan uh, says, well, uh, talking about the internet, I usually do use the internet. I prefer using internet to get some entertainment and to be in contact with relatives. Jung, that's not what I'm asking you, or Jung, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you how often do you use the internet, okay? You have to let me know the frequency, okay? Hung Liman says, I go online pretty much every day since it's a great breakthrough that allows me to approach an infinite amount of information which I need for my study. Uh, Hung, just a couple grammar corrections in there. Keep those in mind. All right, so let me give you a very clear, direct band nine answer. I use the internet all the time. I would say for about five hours a day, whether it's for uploading photos, uh, talking with friends, playing games, or doing research for work, I'm surfing the net constantly all right so why is that a band nine uh, it's a band nine because it gives a very direct answer to the question how often all the time how often is all the time about five hours a day quantity number whether it's for uploading photos talking with friends playing games or doing research for work i'm surfing the net constantly so here i'm using whether or, and certainly your examiner is taking notes. They're going, aha, uh -huh, uses complex sentences, uses correlative conjunctions effectively, answers questions specifically. It's not practiced answers, but real genuine answers. Okay, all right. Shakrani, if I don't catch yours every time, don't worry about it. I do catch different answers here and there. I try to be fair and get a bit of everyone's responses so I can give you all as much feedback as possible. Um, here we go with the next question. What are some of the sites you visit frequently? Keep it simple. Think of what nine out of 10 people would say. Okay. Think of what most people would respond. Keep it simple. Don't try to think of some fancy websites that you visit um, and, uh, and nobody knows about that might be difficult to explain. Okay. 
Suzanne Sabla says, I frequently visit YouTube uh, channel for my IELTS tutorial. Suzanne, what is YouTube? Think about your examiner as a an old person that's 100 years old or an alien from another planet. They don't know what you know. Don't think that your examiner knows what YouTube is. They probably do, but explain it to them, Suzanne. So say something like... Um, one of the sites I often visit is YouTube, uh, which is a video uh, or video blogging or vlogging, a video blogging network where I can watch IELTS lesson, uh, lessons for free and improve my language. Uh, as well, I use Google to search for information and Facebook to communicate with friends and share photos as I had just mentioned. All right. Now you might think that's a long answer, but it's not. Okay. Uh, students be really, really careful of plurals in the question. So here it says, what are some of the sites you visit frequently? So saying YouTube as one answer is okay, but you need to say at least two answers. Uh, because it's plural sites. Often what I see in uh, these uh, speaking interviews is sometimes I only ask a student for one answer and they give me four and I'm just kind of like, oh, I only wanted one. And then sometimes I ask the student for multiple answers like sites and then they give me one and I'm kind of like, oh, why don't you give me another one, at least one or two more. Um, so be very careful with the question. If it's plural, say more than one. If it's a singular, which is a site you visit frequently, then say only one, okay? So pay attention to the details of the question. It's very important, all right? So repeat after me, and then I'll take a look at some more answers, okay? So what are some of the sites you visit frequently? One of the sites I often visit is YouTube, which is a video blogging network where I can watch IELTS lessons for free and improve my English language as well. I use Google to search for information and Facebook to communicate with friends and share photos as I had just mentioned. Oh, look at that. As I had just mentioned, is that correlative conjunction combined with past perfect combined with cohesion to a previous answer? Yes, it is. You get a band nine. All right. That's how, that's how we roll. That's how we roll. Uh, Begum says some of the some sites are very useful, such as Instagram. We can share photos, talk with friends, and gain information from many posts. YouTube is also popular. Begum, yeah, I know that, but I didn't ask you that. I asked you, what are some of the sites you visit frequently, students? The trick to getting high bands in the speaking section is pay attention to every word of the question, okay? Some sites you visit frequently, okay? Those are all important, okay? All of those words. Dev says, I usually check my email to see updates. I use Gmail, so that's the site that I go to. Um, from my thesis advisor. Also, I visit scholarly sites that provide me numerous journals for my research, uh, like uh, Google Scholar. Amar Wadi says, I always visit uh, social media websites like Facebook and Twitter, as well as YouTube, to communicate with others and learn information like IELTS. So Amar Wadi, again, go into those details, name those websites. Okay, uh, Danish, entertainment purposes, good. Tell me those websites. Okay, so Danish, I often visit websites for entertainment purposes uh, like YouTube and Netflix 
So give me some websites that you visit for entertainment purposes. Nilufar says, most of the time I visit educational websites like YouTube, which I can find a large number of educational videos that are quite useful. Okay, give me at least one or two more websites, Nilufar, and make sure that you say I can find, not you can find, but I can find. These questions are about you, not about me. Okay, so it's really important, students, that you use the appropriate response for the question. Indeed, speaking is not just about speaking in English, but it's about proving quality communication. Okay, the speaking section in a big way is not just an English exam, but it's a communication exam. How well do you communicate in English? Okay, keep that in mind, all right? Saira says, I frequently visit Instagram for sharing photos and YouTube uh, daily for lectures on my courses. Uh, Saira, that's good, okay, that's a better answer. At least you gave me two websites. Okay, now we're rolling, let's keep going. Do you use the internet at school or at work? Give me a nice full answer. Again, pay attention to the details. Do you use the internet at school or at work? Give me a nice answer to that question, which clearly answers that question. It's not rehearsed, not learned. Gives me the answer, explanation, and maybe an example. Satisfying Time says, actually, both. As a web designer, I need the internet to download source code to perfect my work. Uh, on the other side, I use the internet for school purposes, like downloading books and learning materials. Hi, Manoj. Ready? Good to see you. Answer the question. Let's go. All right. Ten true. Tented says, I usually use the internet at work for research and relaxation purposes. All right. Amar says, oh, I use it in both school and work for educational purposes and researching about the info and doing business. Great, Amar, throw in a, just a little example and I'll give you a band nine for sure, but I love, Amar, how you recognize that, hey, why not use the correlative conjunction both and here? And you're right to do that. Okay, that was, a right, that was the right approach. Jassy says, actually, I use the internet at school on my computer or in my computer class, uh, like presentations and online study. Alihan says, since I'm still a student, I do use the internet for my study purposes. I search for some information on Wikipedia and download uh, books for school. That's good. Okay. Yeah, so uh, do you use the internet at school or at work? Great setup to use that correlative conjunction both and. Well, I certainly use the web uh, both in university and at my part-time uh, job. In my classes, I mostly go online to research uh, new uh, science or new experiments in psychology. And at work, I look for a source code. Sure. All right. Um, so here we go. Repeat after me. Do you use the internet at school or at work? Well, I certainly use the web both in university and at my part-time job. In my classes, I mostly go online to research new experiments in psychology. And at work, I look for source code. Um, okay, good. So that's a complete answer using both and uh, giving some detail. All right. 
On to the next question. Is internet access commonly available in your country? Is internet access commonly available in your country? Give me a good, solid answer for that one. Juan Paulo Avila for the previous question says, I usually use the internet at both work and at school. When I'm working, I listen to online radio stations to stay awake and informed. At school, I search for documents that can help me with my classes. Good. Pachu, good to see you in class. Pachu Yadav says, I use the internet at work because I search information on Google and apply this in my workplace. For example, I downloaded a PowerPoint of personal hygiene and sanitation training. Very good, Pachu. That works. All right. Nice example. You don't even need to say, for example, um, say like yesterday. Yesterday uh, in the office, I downloaded a PowerPoint presentation uh, for personal hygiene and uh, sanitation training. That works. Okay. Kunwar says, well, we are not allowed to use, not we, Kunwar, I. Well, I'm not allowed to use the internet um, in uh, school because uh, I have to study my books. But after finishing class, I certainly use the internet for work to do uh, some research. Okay, so Kunwar, be a little bit more clear with your answer. Okay. All right, Victor Ratnikov, send me an email. Uh, my email address is at the beginning of this video, and then I'll help you answer that question. Amar Wadi says for this question, so again, students, we're focusing on this question here. Um, is internet access commonly available in your country? And Amar Wadi says, oh, um, it's available for uh, or in all parts of cities, and people use Wi-Fi uh, to access the internet all over. What country, Amar? Name the country, okay? Even if you're doing the test in that country, name the country. Yes, in India, it's readily available. And then explain, okay? Muhammad Hadi says, no, internet is not accessible widely in my country. People use it mostly in the cities, but not uh, in rural areas as there is a lack of service, okay? All right. See, that one's a little bit of a thinker for some students. So if you have to think about your answer, it's okay to say, hmm, well, let me think about that for a second. Yes, it's widely available in cities as there are many Wi-Fi hotspots so people can wirelessly access the internet uh, at their own convenience. However, in the countryside, there's a lack of service, so it's often difficult to go online. Okay. Uh, Binod Karki says, of course... Uh, in this era, the internet is most common factor in every moment, so our country has availability for the internet uh, in any uh, region, not sector. Sector is a bit weird. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll show you what a band nine answer would look like for this. Yes. Uh, there are many internet access points all across Hungary. It is readily available both in rural and urban areas. The uh, usual bandwidth is around 10 megabytes per uh, second, and people can use the web on their phone or computer just about anywhere okay all right so again repeat after me is internet access commonly uh, available 
in your country. Yes, there are many internet access points all across Hungary. It is readily available both in rural and urban areas. The usual bandwidth is around 10 megabytes per second, and people can use the web on their phone or computer just about anywhere. All right, why is that a high band answer? So what makes this a band nine? What do you think? What does this, so you're the examiner. I'm the student. I just gave you this answer. Why are you giving me a band nine or at least a band eight? Why? Why would you give me such a score for this? Okay. So Shakrani says, well, there's complexity. Definitely. There's a range of vocabulary and grammar used. Um, Joanne says, you're giving me details. Onisim says, well, you're giving me quantitative and qualitative information. So maybe it's not true, 10 megabytes per second, but it's giving quantity. So it's giving the person an idea of the availability of the speed that's there. Roshni says, you're using a conjunction. Um, so you're saying both and. You're using a correlative uh, conjunction there. Absolutely. Using another coordinating conjunction there. Another coordinating conjunction there. So it's natural. Okay. Um, absolutely. There's good elaboration. I'm staying on topic. I'm giving a good range of words. And there, yes, Shivam is saying there's some good sentence uh, formation there. I'm paraphrasing as well. Okay. So those are the elements that you need to have to get those band nine scores. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Why do you think people use the internet? So why do you think people use the internet? Meanwhile, while you're thinking of that, I have a great question from Mohammed Hadi. Mohammed Hadi says, well, how do you make an answer like that quickly in just a few seconds? Think about what, why, how. Think of quality and quantity. Think about those points, Mohammed Hadi right away in your answer and then you'll come up with it. So answer, it's readily available. Explain in all parts of India, whether you're north, south, east, west, you can access the internet. How fast is it? Give me an explanation. Oh, it's 10 or 15 megabits or megabytes per second. Give me an example. I was just in uh, this uh, farm or at this farm last week and I had no problem going online. So answer, explain, example, quality, quantity, okay? Faisal Faisal says, people use the internet for many reasons, uh, like getting information for recreation or entertainment and just simply to pass time. They can easily get solutions to problems. The other day, I fixed my bicycle with the help of a YouTube video, right? Faisal, throw in that example. So that's how you go into those details. That's how you elaborate. Think answer, explain, example. Okay. Noor Hassan says, I think people use the internet for many reasons, like to spend their free time uh, learning new information, researching Wikipedia about animals or such topics, and as well as for studies to uh, complete their assignments and to play some games like uh, Minecraft or Call of Duty, okay? Um, so give me some examples, give me those details, all right? Just a little bit more. Many students, uh, I can see that your answers are great, but they can be even better. So you're pushing a band six, seven, but you can be even a band a little bit higher with those details, okay? Mary Claire says, in the modern world today, the internet is the primary source of information for some research and entertainment, okay? That's indirectly answering my question. I need direct answers. Dana says, the internet is paramount source for sharing information globally. Furthermore, most companies and work depend on the internet, especially uh, for booking tickets or traveling. Use the question, students, in your answers. Okay. Individuals across the globe use the World 
wide web for, and I know many students love this word, so why not use it, a plethora? Because here, it's correct in context. Plethora means many, right? So for a plethora of reasons, such as work, entertainment, and school, as I had mentioned in a few points at the beginning of this interview. I myself use the internet for all of these purposes like this morning when I bought my plane ticket to Australia online and then watched a movie. Oh, Netflix. All right. Again, repeat after me. Why do you think people use the internet? Individuals across the globe use the World Wide Web for a plethora of reasons, such as work, entertainment, and school. As I had mentioned in a few points at the beginning of this interview, I myself use the internet for all of these purposes, like this morning when I bought my plane ticket to Australia online and then watched a movie on Netflix. All right. Nice and smooth, nice and fast, so that you get some good scores for fluency. Practice your intonation, okay? When I say these sentences, I'm saying them for you, so just repeat after me, all right? You can do it. I know you can, okay? Here we go. Another question. Uh, how has the way you use the internet changed uh, compared to five years ago? Let me fix that question a little bit. How has the way you use the internet today changed compared to five years ago? So how has the way you use the internet today changed compared to five years ago? Hmm. Give me a nice answer for that one that you think would get a band seven or more. Shubansu Tiwari says, it has changed a lot in the last five years. Earlier, the internet was available everywhere, but now we can access on our phone and in my country. The government has set various hotspots everywhere. Um, Shubansu, that's okay, but I'm asking you the way you use the internet, not how has the internet changed. I'm asking how has the way you use the internet changed? Uh, so you're on the right track, but you're not giving me the right answer, so I can't give you a very good uh, score, okay? Uh, same thing with your answer, satisfying times. You're not talking about how the way you use the internet has changed, okay? Game over, you're really, really welcome. Okay, so again, give me a nice answer. Uh, Tentru says, well, five years ago, the internet was not so popular, so I rarely used it. Compared to these days, I use it almost all the time. Uh, Tentru, now you're thinking the right way. You're talking about yourself. Just one mistake. Present perfect has the way the internet today changed. So use that present perfect, okay? I'm waiting for the first person to nail those two points. Use present perfect and talk about yourself, the way uh, that you use the internet. How has that changed? Okay. Dana says, previously I was using 2G speed, but now I use 4G bandwidth uh, speed since there has been a lot of improvement to internet infrastructure, such as fiber optic cable. Right, Danish? Then I'll give you that band nine. Give me some present perfect. Amar Wadi says, this is a good question. I believe that the marketing online has changed a little bit 
from the past days. I just bought an IELTS class online today through YouTube membership. Okay, good, Amarwadi. So uh, the way that you use the internet has changed uh, because 10 years ago, uh, you used it mostly for entertainment, but these days you have been using it regularly for online shopping, right, Amarwadi? And then you have that good band nine with the way I use it has changed, and it's because the internet has changed uh, in its capabilities. Rather than just showing information or sharing information, I'm now more confident in purchasing uh, items as well online, okay? So use that present perfect, students, so I can give you those band nine scores, okay? Here's my example answer. Immediately start with the present perfect. Uh, mm, certainly, the way I use the internet now is different from half a decade ago. Uh, back in 2014, I used the internet mostly for social media and entertainment. But these days, I find myself doing most of my shopping online as well, since this has uh, greatly improved compared to five years ago. Okay. All right. Um, so again, one more time. How has the way you use the internet today changed compared to five years ago? Certainly, the way I use the internet now is different from half a decade ago. Back in 2014, I used the internet mostly for social media and entertainment, but these days I find myself doing most of my shopping online as well, since this has greatly improved compared to five years ago, and I have a lot more money than I did back then. Bada boom, bada bing, you got yourself a band nine, okay? So that's what you need to do. Think about what most people would say, and it doesn't have to be the truth, you can make it up, okay? Just make sure that you're talking about yourself and you're using the present perfect, okay? Has improved, um, is different now than half, I use the internet, okay? So you got to have the present perfect in there. Okay, last and final question, students. If you could make a website, what would it be, okay? And if you can't answer right away, buy some time with an expression like, that's an interesting question. Give me a moment to think about it, okay? So if you could make a website, what would it be? What would your website be? Okay, I'm curious to learn of your answers. If you could make a website, what would it be? What would your website, don't try to overdo it, okay? Uh, in the IELTS, don't try to overly impress the examiner. Ali Shahib says, sports. It's a good start, Ali. Just give me a full answer. So Tugeldur says, because of the fact that I'm mostly interested in anime and manga, I would certainly make a website which can express the ideals of our anime community and so on. Tugeldur, right on. I'm a big fan of Naruto and many other manga as well. So I definitely check out your website. Uh, it's K-pop, guessing it's Korean pop. Uh, if I ever made a website, it would be a blog website because making travel vlogs is trendy and people can see every corner of the world from the comfort of their own home. It's K-pop, that is a good answer. Amar Wadi says, oh, I can create a blog about my everyday chores and educational studies as well. 
Hmm, Amar, I don't know. It could be interesting. All right, Dev says, if I'm given a chance to make a website, I will create a site wherein people can exchange ideas. Some of its features are posting information and communicating with other members. Dev, that is a fantastic answer. Beautiful complexity. Uh, great use of the question. So if you could make a website, if I'm given a chance to make a website. Shakrani says, if I had the chance to make any kind of website, it would definitely be an English word game. I think it would not only help individuals, but also be good for me. <laughs> yeah, like word up. Uh, Shakrani, very good. Okay, that works. So... Uh, given the chance to make any website, it would be an online learning portal where students can improve their IELTS scores so that they may realize their dreams of uh, immigration and higher level learning. The site would have videos, interactive courses, and practice exams as well as other services like editing oh wait a second i've made a website like that just for you uh that is kind of my funny last answer of the day uh if you could make a website what would it be given the chance to make a website it would be an online learning portal where students can improve their ielts scores so that they may realize their dreams of immigration and higher level learning the site would have videos, interactive courses, and practice exams, as well as other services like editing, students. Those websites actually exist. Your dreams can become a reality. You will perfect the English language. Let us help you. Check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. That's it for today's class, students. Uh, hope you check out these websites. They look like this. This is the general, gieltshelp.com. Click that red button to join. And aehelp.com. Click, click, click that red button to join uh, there. Um, and tomorrow we have some extra classes, okay? So remember, we, we do have classes tomorrow. Usually Sundays we don't, but this time we do just because I was on vacation for the past few weeks. So tomorrow we have task one for members, pie charts, and ta or speaking part three for our students at the same time as this. You're very welcome, Dev. You're very welcome, Bishal, Eugene, Kaniz. My heart goes out to all of you. I'm with you. Uh, I know that learning another language is very challenging. I know that IELTS can be exceptionally daunting, but keep up the good fight. You will win, and the sweet fruits of your labor will be yours. Much love to all of you. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.